Next comedian coming to the stage comes up from the great city of Baltimore. Let's get it started. Get clapping for none other than Michael Fern. Hello, Gettysburg. How's everybody doing tonight? Thank you. Yes, that's right. I'll give you a minute. I know. This is a lot to drink in. You're like body of a six foot three Irish street tough, voice and personality of a 12 year old girl. I understand. I know it's weird. I live inside it, okay? I know it's weird. But really, that's like really on brand with what I'm all about. Because on one hand, I love drinking beer, but also stickers and boys. <laughs> JK, I do not like beer. Um, that is just my fun little way of saying, uh, I like my ladies like I like my lima beans. Uh, which is, I do not like them. Um, gross. Uh, but I used to pretend to like both ladies and lima beans for the same reason, so my mom wouldn't be mad at me. <laughs> it didn't work. Um, I don't even have to tell that joke. Anybody knows I'm gay. I just said, deaf and blind people can touch me and they will know you're wearing a Beyonce concert t-shirt under that. You know, they will know. Just through the power of touch. Also, blind and deaf people, you're gonna miss a lot of this. Uh, Stand-up comedy, weird choice. Bad, you're gonna miss a lot of this. No, I've never seen Beyonce in concert. I'm not some sort of like ridiculous gay stereotype. Um, uh, so hot under all of these lights. Uh, <laughs> I was so excited to come to Gettysburg uh, because I love ghosts and uh, I was like, oh, they have the most racist ghosts in the country. I cannot wait. It's gonna be great. Uh, I am haunted myself. I am very haunted um, by the girl that I killed in sixth grade. Hear me out. It's not as bad as it sounds. Um, I was playing softball, which you would think would be the worst part of the memory because I have to remember myself running. Can you imagine? I am flaming gay standing still. Can you imagine me flouncing towards first base? It's not great. Not great. But I actually hit the ball, which I was shocked too. And then I made it to first and I sit, got there and I was like, oh my God, I'm a jock now. <laughs> I'm gonna start wearing short shorts and a sweater around my shoulders, like a jock. And then I look and everybody is like around in a huddle and like, they're talking about how good I am at softball. <laughs> uh, and no, they were trying to resuscitate the girl I had knocked unconscious by flinging the bat behind me as I flounced towards first base. <laughs> and then she died. I mean, like eight years later, but still, I feel very responsible. I have never read convincing literature that Hodgkin's disease is not caused by a fungal bat to the head, okay? <laughs> Prove it to me. I also am haunted by the girl I crippled in high school. Hear me out, it's not as bad as it sounds. Uh, I was on, uh, I used to do a lot of drugs back then. I was on ecstasy on cocaine, which is not like a recipe for great decision making, you know? And I was like, here, let me give you a massage real fast, you know, because it's ecstasy and cocaine. And, uh, and then I pinched a nerve in her back and she was like, ow! And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, but I'm still on cocaine. So here, let me tell you about a movie idea that I'm writing. <laughs> but don't talk, just let me talk. Uh, and then I saw her like 15 years later and she was like, I was like, well, what do you do for a living? She's like, well, I don't work. You know, I had all those spinal surgeries. I was like, Who? did they say whose fault it was? Oh God. And she's the woman that I had sex with. She's the one who stole my, not a gold star gay card. She's <laughs> speaking about stupid shit you do when you're on drugs, you know. Not that having sex with women is inherently stupid. It just was not for me. Uh, you know, a sexual encounter is bad where at the end of it, you look at her and go, Sorry. Uh, we're so cool, right? Okay, good. Uh, I'll see you soon, but not super soon. Maybe, eventually. Uh, and she had all these spinal surgeries, so that means either I was such a drugged up mess that I really hurt her and screwed up her life, or I'm so bad at pleasuring a woman it causes spina bifida. <laughs> she didn't really have spina bifida, it's just a funny word. <laughs> bifida, <laughs> that's great. Uh, <laughs> I came all the way from Baltimore. I love Baltimore. Uh, it's an ugly baby, but I love it. It's my ugly baby, you know? I know it's an ugly baby, but like, and I know like the second anybody leaves the room, they're like, did you see that fucking baby? Oh my God. <laughs> I hope he is smart, because he is not a looker. 
Baltimore's great, but like, is it? You know what I mean? Like, it's fine, but like, mm, not really. Uh, like, we are so trashy and so proud of it. We're so trashy. We had a boat that was sinking in the harbor, like in one of the marina docks, and they were like, mm, let it sink. Yeah, we'll just uh, we'll just wait this one out and see what happens. And then uh, it turns out that the guy who owned it was, of course, a heroin addict and hadn't paid his dock fees, so he wouldn't come back to claim this boat. But I just love that somewhere in two different parts of the city. City, both this heroin addict and his boat were both just like slowly <laughs> listing towards the ground. Baltimore, I love it. Uh, yeah, I just did a special, I just filmed a special, and uh, you all can download it on iTunes and Amazon. It's called Straight Acting uh, in June. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, you know, I figured it was time to do this special. I wanted to do, like, a big gay stand-up special because, like, I feel like we've made a lot of progress in gay culture lately. Like, you know, we have um, passed marriage equality and we have repealed Don't Ask, Don't Tell. There are out gay athletes playing all kinds of professional sports. Those aren't, like, the three things I would have focused on first, just by the way. <laughs> If I was like brokering this peace deal for acceptance with the straight people, I would have been like, I want total protection under the law for every member of the LGBTQIA. They were like, no. But <laughs> we are willing to give you. <laughs> weddings, war, and football. <laughs> As straight people, those are three of our most important things. And I was like, mm, they're like, and RuPaul can win an Emmy. We're like, we'll take it. I'm in, I'm in, I'm all in. But I don't care about those moments. Like, everybody knows about that kind of stuff. That's national news. I want to talk about what I feel is the most significant moment in gay history. It just happened. I'm sure some of you remember. We rejected Kevin Spacey's application to join the gay community. We were like, uh, oh, I don't think so, Kaiser Sose. No, no, no. You did what to a 14-year-old boy? No, fuck you, no parade for you. I'm sorry, get the hell out of here. It was quite the big to do. We had to have an emergency 2 a.m. meeting of the Gay High Council to vote on it. Almost everybody voted no. Ellen, no. Neil Patrick Harris, no. Kristen Chenoweth, she's not gay, but she's always hanging out, no. Anderson Cooper and Andy Cohen, they both said no. At the same time, we're like, we get it, you're friends. You don't have to talk in unison, it's annoying. Even Jeffrey Dahmer said no. He came all the way from hell just to vote in this emergency council meeting. He was like, ooh, this guy is a monster, no. Would anybody like some of this human head I brought as a snack? It is Latino, it is delicious. Um, and then Kevin Spacey, when he got busted, then he made it sound like, eh, you know how gay guys are, we just get drunk and try to have sex with 14 year olds. Loosen up, straight people. What, fuck you, dude. Okay, sure, yeah, I've gotten drunk and hit on a 14-year-old boy, but I was nine, so it wasn't illegal. <laughs> Don't drink that much anymore. And then at the end of his statement, he was like, and I'll choose to live the life of a gay man. Oh, that's how that works, you chose to be gay? But you do not choose to be gay. Someone has to turn you gay, <laughs> duh. Were you not paying attention in health class? Uh, it can happen any number of ways. You know, like maybe you got a birthday present wrapped in pink paper instead of blue paper. Maybe your mom had a job, but your dad stayed home to take care of you. Maybe you saw Rent, any form of Rent, it doesn't matter. Musical, off-Broadway, high school production, you're gay now. Uh, and whatever it is that turns you into a gay, just write it down. Because you're going to need to know when you go to register yourself as a homosexual with the government. You know, you just pick if you're LGB or T, really simple, L, lady gay, G, gay guy, B, black gay, T, tall gay, super easy. <laughs> then you get your license, you're on your way, and then you get your welcome basket, very important. It's got everything you need to start you on your journey. It's got your copy of Lady Gaga's Born That Way, and... If you're a boy, a jockstrap. If you're a girl, a flannel. Uh, it's a good one, though. The sleeves rip right off. It's a really good one. And most importantly, it has your glossary of popular terms. Because trust me, you do not accidentally want to say, Oh, yes, I'm T, when you meant, oh, cool. <laughs> it's a dead giveaway. You're new. Thank you guys so much. My name is Michael Furr. Good night.